Am I the asshole for wanting to divorce my postpartum wife? It's stupid to think that I'm at this point, but here I am. My soon-to-be ex-wife, 28 female, and I, 29 male, have wanted kids for years, and we were thrilled when she finally got pregnant last year. From day one, I wanted to be the most supportive husband and future father I could be. Her father was never involved in her life. I used to work as a tech in labor and delivery, and my brother, to put it kindly, is not the most involved father. I saw too many problems up close when it came to lacking husbands, and I would be damned before I made the same mistakes. The problem is, roughly four weeks into her pregnancy, everything started going downhill. She stopped wanting sex. Fair enough. Hormones and stress make that a problem, and I went full stop. But then she didn't want any physical interaction. No cuddling, no kissing, slowly becoming more and more distant. Her eating constantly changed, and she was terrible about it. She would demand that I get her something all day. Then the moment I give it to her, she wants something else, screaming at me. Okay, again, hormonal issues, I get it, no problem. She never let me go to any appointments, no group she went to, and spent more time away. She became cold and bitter, constantly angry at me. This went on for months. She slapped me a couple times when I forgot one of her dozens of tasks she assigned me during the day. She stopped doing anything for the house a month into the pregnancy. Sure, she's pregnant. I get it. Moving around is hard. But she wouldn't even do laundry about four weeks in. And by five weeks in, I did everything. I'm also the primary source of income. I barely sleep. I'm running on fumes. She made me sleep in the guest room, would always try and pick fights. I never once raised my voice, my hand, or my tone. I sat there and constantly mentally reminded myself this isn't her and this would all be worth it. She didn't want me to make any baby decisions. No name, no work on the nursery, nothing. One month before she delivered, she yelled how fucking useless I am and how I don't do anything and that she's staying with her mother. She didn't let me get her anything, come check on her. She threatened to divorce me and got a restraining order if I even called her. A couple of weeks back, I found out about the birth of my son from a Facebook post. Oh. She posted it with her mother and some family, and it fucking broke me. I tried to go to the hospital and visit. They had the security kick me out. After months of outright <sighs> hatred, anger, and abuse thrown at me 24-7, I fucking had it. Odds are I'm not even on the birth certificate. I opened up a new account, and all of my deposits go there. I took half out of our joint account. She never bought baby stuff ahead of time. Who knows what that money was going toward. So now that she has to buy supplies for our son, she used up every cent. I've gotten a lawyer. The house is mine. I'm the only one who spent money on it anyway. I've sent the rest of her stuff to her mother's house. I'm demanding a paternity test. I'm not spending another damn cent until I get verification that it's my son. I'm absolutely divorcing her. She chose the stay-at-home life. If she cheated, she screwed. Her mother has money for a couple of weeks stay, not even close to enough time for full support. If he is my son, I will absolutely be getting any rights as a father for a relationship. Last week, my soon-to-be ex called. She was practically hyperventilating. She wanted to come home. She was crying how it was all a mistake. She's not staying with her mother. She was at a friend's house. She wants to come home. She wants our son to have his father. I told her I don't believe that he's my son. Why the fuck would she pull this sh if he is? Show me a paternity test and I'll do everything I can for him and him only. She wants to meet tomorrow at a park so I can talk to her. I said sure, so I can finally say everything I should have said to her months ago. My parents are hoping we can make up, but they absolutely understand if I won't. My brother is a deadbeat jackass, so I don't care what he has to say, but my sister thinks I should at least hear her out. Am I the asshole? Update, am I the asshole for wanting to divorce my postpartum wife? I had to speed up the process of actually talking to her since the story spread quickly around the internet, inevitably reaching someone involved with her friends or family, and now way more people I personally know are getting the details than I'm comfortable with. Oh well, my bad, lol. So this is okay. okay, okay. Right. Yeah, we're back, we're back, we're back. Let's do it. <laughs> Before I ended up chatting with her, I opened up to my parents and sisters about what was happening in detail. My parents were flustered at me hiding the more unsavory details, to say the least, and are probably going to make sure that I'm okay. My sister would probably have to be held back from thrashing her, 
So I had to get a friend to help with the chat since my sister would not be able to contain herself. So basically, within hours of the story going into the digital stratosphere, I called my wife back as quickly as I could to finally sit down and talk. We chose a local park this morning, and I had a friend of mine record the conversation from beginning to end. I was basically ready to hear the generic affair story and get out of Dodge. But of course, it got complicated. We met at a section with picnic tables and picked one far away from other I people really to avoid <laughs> to avoid them getting wrapped in any awkwardness. She looked terrible, haggard, stressed, and thankfully without the baby. She tried to have the big emotional chat and whatnot. I wasn't tearing up or acting like the hardened badass. I frankly was just wanting to figure out what this was all about. I didn't even get to the to ask the question before the floodgates spilled. I'm going to attempt to relay this story as oh best as I gosh, can. I can with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> because He's even <laughs> He's Tell us it. <laughs> because even looking back on the recording, it's a mess. But also, it's because I don't believe it. So, fair warning, it could all be fake. This all started with her mother. As I said before, my wife's father was absent. He started off well, having two sons with her mother before her. When her mother got pregnant with her, her father went from being the picture-perfect guy he was at first and slowly changed into a negligent, abusive, unfaithful, and unsupportive jackass, ending with him disappearing when her mother was delivering. He's been in and out of prison since. No one knows why he did it. The impression her mother always gave was a strong, resilient woman who withstood anything life threw at her and did anything for her kids. She also claimed to be in therapy for years. In reality, she has managed to conceal a deep hatred for men outside of her sons, but according to my wife, there was favoritism towards her. My wife also found out she stopped therapy almost a decade ago, but never told anyone. Her mother seemed to always have some slight against me, and now I know why. She was never hostile, but certainly wasn't warm to me, and hearing about her secret hatred I kind of knew where this was going to go. Roughly about half a year before she got pregnant, my mother-in-law slowly began sowing seeds of doubt and bitterness into my wife. Mm. Apparently, she had a full mental break. She told her about me staying late at work, possibly hiding an affair, or that myself providing a majority of the income, setting her up for a hard divorce. Everything my mother-in-law's husband did to her, she convinced my wife I would do to her and she pumped this position into her for months. My wife also idolized her mother, and compounding that with anxiety she suffered for years, she dove in deep. As soon as she got pregnant, like on the dot, she fell into a mental hole within days, and that's when her mom got a hold of her again. Mm -hmm. Hearing about her pregnancy apparently triggered something fierce in my mother-in-law, and it spiraled from there. She had my wife fully convinced it was happening again. Every single thing my wife did to hurt me was at the behest of my mother-in-law. Combined with pregnancy hormones, an undiagnosed mental illness she claims to have, no confirmation, and stress, she completely lost her mind. She 100% believed I would bail, so she was punishing me first, culminating in her moving in with her mother and leaving me out of the birth. While I was sending the papers and starting the divorce proceedings, she kicked into full-blown postpartum depression and when her mother finally got her, when she finally beat me, which I guess was her victory over her ex, did I mention she's fucking crazy? She had no more use of my wife. The family involved in the birth included my mother-in-law's sister and my wife's brothers. While my mother-in-law and her sister knew what was going on, my brother-in-law got fed the BS narrative my mother-in-law spun. When my mother-in-law was done with her plans, the entire facade came down and my brother-in-laws found out everything upon questioning my wife, and they were horrified. Needless to say, postpartum, facing a very grueling divorce on her side, no longer welcome in our home, and having done everything to alienate me from my son at the behest of a broken lunatic, reality hit her like a truck. She torched her entire life because her mother is a broken shell of a human who used her to enact her own self of justice. The very mother who washed her hands of her after she got what she wanted. Or at least this is the story she gave me. Frankly, there are many holes in the story. The starting point of the patterns of abuse. The claims of who was involved in the delivery. Me being absent from appointments. The friend who she confirmed as female she was staying with. And of course, my alleged son's paternity. 
it seems way too fucking crazy to be made up. Who the hell will go to the effort to make this up facing what she was facing? As soon as she finished, she said she's setting up a paternity test and gave me the info that I needed. Within luck, it should be done in roughly a week or so. Once I do my part. She gave the most sincere apologies any human being has ever given. She begged for another chance. I was frankly too stunned to say anything, so she left and promised to call soon. I don't think I can give her another chance. I don't think I can ever risk anything like this again. God, I'm still hoping she's just being a cheating psycho and spinning a sympathy story to try and throw me off because this got way too complicated. Final update? Well, well, well. This was all a fantastic waste of time. This is full of stupid information that doesn't matter, so here's what happened. It took me way longer than it should have to realize I should actually call somebody who saw her behavior when she left firsthand. I called one of her brothers... I basically word vomited and relayed the whole story and asked if they could verify, and they could not. Well, what actually happened was she started having an affair with a coworker roughly four months before she got pregnant. He gave her the affair partner spiel about how he was better and how she should go with him when she got pregnant. She immediately gets it in her head to abuse me, usual affair crap, eventually wanting to run off with him. The day she left, she did stay at her mother's house, but had all the intention to move in with him after giving birth. Before she delivers, she owns up and tells her family everything. My mother-in-law and brothers-in-law couldn't care at the time. They may not be crazy, but they still didn't like me. And from what she was telling them about her affair partner, they liked him. Affair partner was at the birth, high, and tried to start a fight with them. By then, wife already did a paternity test and it was his. Affair partner then disappears and she realizes that she's fucked. We had a solid prenuptial and my house is premarital. Plus, we live in an at-fault state. Around that time is when I called her out and split finances. She was deep in a hole with no way out. And in her mind, pitching a drama show about her family to me made sense to get me on her side. What was the plan for my paternity test? I don't know. What was she planning for whenever I interacted with the family again? I don't know. Why did her family go along with it? I don't know. How was she ever going to make up for the abuse? I don't know. Is there any truth to her tale about her mother? I have no idea and I don't care at this point. This whole story was a desperate person and her toxic family gambling everything on a no-show and only when they burned all bridges with me did they try and reconnect. I'm glad I called the brother who had any decency to own up to their nonsense. He realized how in deep he was and that his sister didn't help with that and he's finally done with his family's crap and wants to get away. He gave me a copy of the paternity test she gave to him. He sent dozens of messages she had with him and the family in the group chat, and I had enough proof from my lawyer to bury her. I texted her, and I told her I knew everything. She's been messaging me relentlessly with the most vile things she can say, and I'm just forwarding it all to my lawyer. I'm still in awe how she tried to pull a last resort manipulation tactic with the story about her family, and it's actually kind of disturbing, but that doesn't really concern me now. Locks are changed, finances are already separate, I'm not the father on the birth certificate, and my divorce is getting ready to start. Probably will have no updates for a long time. Divorces take way longer than Reddit makes it seem like. And anyway, this was the best case scenario, and I'm actually giddy that I have a clean break. Huge sigh of relief. She could have at least told me the truth and spared the pointless drama update. Am I wrong for getting another table for me and my daughter after my husband and his family refused to let her sit at their table with her teddy bear? My daughter, 10, best friend, 11, passed away from leukemia very recently. She is devastated beyond measure. She started carrying around the teddy bear her friend gave her as a way to soothe her and control her anxiety. My husband, her stepdad, thinks it's ridiculous especially when she takes it with her to public places. But we don't hear weird comments from anyone about it. Still, he thought this was ridiculous and classified it as a behavioral issue. My husband's birthday was yesterday. He told me to meet him at the restaurant. I obviously brought my daughter and she brought her teddy bear. The moment my husband and his mom saw it, their faces went pale. As I was taking my seat, my mother-in-law flat out said that she was sorry, but she couldn't allow my daughter to sit at the table with important guests with the teddy bear. I asked where were the guests and she said that they should show up in about 10 minutes. My husband backed her up and told me to just put the teddy bear 
were in the car, but instead of doing that, I went and sat with my daughter at another table. My husband was shocked, but didn't say anything. He and his family watched. As guests started to arrive, they recognized me and came to greet me and asked why I was sitting at a separate table with my daughter. I told them the story and one by one, they started joining me. I didn't know how this happened. My husband and his mom were furious by this. Eventually, only he, his mom, brothers, and their significant others were at that table. The other guests sat with us. It was so overwhelming, but my daughter enjoyed the attention they were giving her by asking her about the teddy bear. My husband and in-laws got up and left 30 minutes later. I went home later and my husband wasn't there. He and his mom left me some texts calling me petty and accusing me of not only ruining his birthday but turning his relatives against him and stealing his guests. He mentioned I could have left the toy in the car but chose to be petty and disrespectful. Now the outcome is awful. He's still at his parents' house and is pretty much pissed off.